Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be making some monosodium dihydrogen phosphate. Now, this chemical could be made fairly simply from some calcium phosphate, some sulfuric acid, and some sodium hydroxide. And these are all easily obtainable from household materials. Sulfuric acid is found at hardware stores such as Rona, which is where I got mine. Sodium hydroxide can be purchased as hardware stores such as Home Hardware, and it's sold as lye, and you can also find it as some drain cleaners. And calcium phosphate can either be purchased from a pottery supply store, or you can make it yourself from trisodium phosphate, which is TSP cleaner, and calcium chloride. So we're going to be making this with the eventual goal of making some white phosphorus, so stay tuned for that. So with this, we're going to be adding the sulfuric acid to the calcium phosphate, and this will precipitate out calcium sulfate from solution, and we'll be left with the solution of phosphoric acid. We can then partially neutralize this to form our monosodium dihydrogen phosphate. So to begin, I split this up into two batches, but we need 250 grams of our calcium phosphate, so I put 125 grams per beaker. Next, we'll need about 66.6 .6 milliliters of 93% drain cleaner. And as I mentioned, I got this from Rona. Now in this reaction, we're adding an excess of calcium phosphate, and this will just ensure that all of our sulfuric, re sulfuric acid reacts so that the calcium phosphate will precipitate out, and we can filter that off. After adding all of the sulfuric acid to this, I noticed that it was quite thick, so I ended up adding another 300 milliliters extra of water to make a nice slurry. And now we should have a nice phosphoric acid solution with our calcium phosphate sulfate sorry, precipitating out. So we'll quickly vacuum filter off the calcium sulfate and then transfer it into a large jar. So once everything was transferred into the large jar, we have about 1.62 moles of phosphoric acid in solution. So to completely neutralize this, we'll need about 64.5 grams of sodium hydroxide. Now, we don't actually have this much sodium hydroxide because sodium hydroxide will absorb a little bit of water out of the air. However, having a slight excess of our phosphoric acid solution isn't a bad thing because we want to prevent the formation of disodium monohydrogen phosphate, which would form if we over-neutralize our phosphoric acid. So by having slightly less sodium hydroxide, we ensure only monosodium dihydrogen phosphate is formed. Now, something that else I noticed that's interesting is that when these two solutions were added together, some calcium sulfate precipitated out. Turns out that calcium sulfate is slightly soluble in phosphoric acid solution, but when we neutralize the acid, it causes it to decrease its solubility and precipitate out. Some calcium hydroxide may also be formed and precipitate out, and this might be what we're seeing. So, after filtering off this last bit of calcium sulfate or calcium hydroxide or whatever it was, we need to boil everything down. Um, and so I put it on a hot plate and boiled everything down. However, we ran into some issues along the way. There was some extremely intense bumping which occurred, and one beaker actually broke. I've never had this happen. But um, it's not a big issue about the beaker, but I am sad that we lost half for a yield. So I transferred everything into this steel pan and boiled it down the rest of the way. Uh, so definitely, if you're going to be doing this, I'd highly recommend using only steel and no glass because the bumping is quite intense. So although half our product was lost, we still have more than enough to continue on. So it was boiled down in steel, and then when we had only about 100 milliliters left, we actually boiled it down in a copper container. You could also boil it down in a steel container, but the coppers are super flexible and makes it easy to break out because after fully boiling to dryness, it becomes quite like glass and you wouldn't actually be able to get it out of glass for anyhow. So if you heat this up too much, we actually form diacetyl pyrophosphate, which we'll be making in a pr future video for our sodium hexametaphosphate to make white phosphorus. But um, if you keep the temperature lower, then we'll only form our monosodium dihydrogen phosphate. So in the end here, we got 52 grams of our product, which corresponds to about a 53.7% yield. And I did cut the expected yield in half because we lost half of our product, so uh, overall this wasn't super efficient, and I'm sure it could be improved a lot more, and I might be trying this in a future video. Again, we'll see what happens. So we're going to be using this in the future to make some uh, sodium hexametaphosphate, and use that to make white phosphorus. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in a future video. Okay, bye.